I, from an IID perspective, I wanted to share uh, a number of sort of common lessons which we've uh, identified through, throughout the uh, implementation of the project in each country. Um, although all approaches are obviously and rightly so tailored to each local context, we can in fact observe a number of, um, of commonalities between, uh, between the different approaches, both in terms of the, the actual technical side of the approach, but also in terms of, of the methodologies which have been used. Um, to start with, as you might have noticed, all approaches built on existing governance arrangements in each country. Uh, so in a way, they don't reinvent the wheel, but they sort of strengthen and clarify uh, existing processes, which is a, a real strength because it, it facilitates um, local buy-in from, from communities and also it creates conditions for um, easier replication and, and upscaling of, of these um, approaches. Uh, and as you might have noticed as well, I think a common thread throughout the uh, three approaches is, it might seem simple and obvious, but it's the addition of women members on land governance bodies, uh, which is not an end to itself, uh, but is definitely uh, a key starting point. Um, another key lesson is that it's not just about the, the what, but it's also very much about the how, the methodology. Uh, so process is really, was really key to ensure success in all three approaches. And, we can again notice a pattern there was a very strong use of participatory methods to really ensure local buy-in uh, in all of the communities where the partners, our local partners have been working. Um, another lesson I think I've, I've alluded to before is the fact that and maybe to different extents, uh, but overall the process were very inclusive and actually, although they were very much targeting at strengthening women, women's voices, they were, um, they were benefiting all community members, not just women. And we have to recognize that land governance in all the countries and communities where, where we've been working, land governance is often weak and needs to be strengthened for all community members, um, including, including women. Um, and this, I think, really sort of helped um, getting local buy-in and, and sort of contributes to, to social uh, cohesion and all community members felt like they were gaining something from, uh, from these approaches. Um, another lesson, I think, is in all the countries, the impact of strengthening women's participation in, in, in land decision-making processes was wider than land governance. Uh, so it strengthened women's voices at the local level more, more widely, which we think is a, is a positive thing. Because um, the, the approach is really sort of challenged existing gender relations and gender roles at the, at the community level. Um, and, and, and finally, maybe one comment on, on the approach, well, all the three approaches um, in relation to land governance processes, there are, we think that women's voices is a key component of a sort of broader picture. Uh, we are aware that having strengthened voices doesn't mean uh, more land rights. Um, so we need to look at the whole, in each community where, where these approaches have been developed, we need to look at the broader picture and um, see what's going on in terms of land management and in terms of clarification of, of rights. And this might be um, the, the, the object of other pro projects. Um, but strengthening women's voice is a key component which, in fact, uh, is very important to take place before um, rights are actually clarified and, and, and certified um, because if this doesn't happen then there is a risk that uh, women, women's rights might, women actually might not be able to come forward and ask for their, their right to be clarified and hence um, we might end up with a situation where most certificates or titles are issued to, to men which sort of would 
crystallize the, um, the gender disparities. 